Introducing the all-new Casio Vintage A100. This one is homaging the F100 from 1977. A very significant watch for this storied brand. Why was it significant? Well, it was the first ever resin watch from Casio. And you can look at that in two different ways. You can think of it as the fall of Casio because they stopped making these beautiful vintage watches in metal. They're tough to find now. You gotta look, you gotta hunt for them the 80s and 70s. The last remnants of the metal cases. They did some, you can see the 50 and 52 here, which is basically the F100 with different body style in metal instead of the resin case. Or you can think of it as the rise of G-Shock. A couple years later, I believe in 83, the G-Shock was born. And of course, resin plays a big part in all G-Shocks today. But I'm a big fan of those vintage Casios that look like this, but have a metal case. This one has a beautiful bevel. Looks almost like a jewel that goes all the way across that rectangular case shape. This one is chrome plated, but has a stainless steel bracelet and case back. Using the module 3503, this one is not that accurate. Plus minus 30 seconds a month instead of the usual quartz rating we usually see on the channel. Plus minus 15 seconds a month, and the battery is easy to remember, CR1616. Now this watch being significant for Casio is one thing, but it has another trick up its sleeve. It was worn by Sigourney Weaver in Alien. Wow, so very cool. A movie watch, but of course the movie watch did have modifications from the costume department. Are they called costume department? I don't even know. So let's do the measurements real quick. 32.8 where three and nine would be on an analog watch. We have a thickness of 9.3, so ultra thin, and we do have a resin crystal. So plastic crystal, not even mineral. So expect it to scratch just by looking at it wrong. We do have a lug to lug of 40.1 millimeters. The bracelet is 18. So you can swap it out. And of course, it is a piece of trash garbage. It might even give you an epilator experience on your forearms. All right, so it's cheap and nasty. It does have the nice sliding mechanism. You just lift that up and slide to adjust so you can get the perfect fit. Use your Bergeon spring bar tool. Links down below to pop it up. Here you go. And then you slide and then lock it in place. So we have the buttons on the front of the watch, giving the sides of the case a nice clean look, and it's easier to use. You don't have to readjust your hand and finick with those tiny little buttons on the other Casios. Here, you have a control panel or command center, whatever you wanna call it, and the bottom right, we cycle through the modes. Alarm, you have one alarm, and then the stopwatch. Start is green. Right there, even with gloves, guys, it's easy. Stop and restart is up here, or reset. There we go. And the light is the top right button. It's not gonna work right now. And we're back to the main time. If you wanna change the time or adjust it, cycle through everything really quick, and there you see it flashing. There, we accepted it. All right, so very simple, intuitive, easy to use, and functional does have a calendar as well. I believe the calendar is pre-programmed until the year 2099, so very nice. Now the price on this thing comes in at 55 USD. A little bit steep, but it is a true classic. Casio's words, not mine. <laughs> it has cool factor for sure, but I think it's overpriced. I'm not gonna say it's a quality watch, but it is a watch and it should be 20 bucks. All right, so there I said it. Now you can pick this up at Kavar Jewelers, links down below. Now let's see it next to the G-Shock Square. It's brethren. All right, there it is next to my own G-Shock. And there you can really see that size difference. 
and the tiny A100 is kind of holding its own. Look at that. Square watches tend to wear larger than their size indicates. But when we look at the lug to lug, we start to see the huge chasm between these two watches. If you Casio fans are watching this, I know you have a square because come on, everyone has a square. So hopefully that gives you some size perspective. Now let's check it out on my wrist. Here it is on my six and a half inch wrist. Your significant other is definitely gonna notice how small it is. But um, you know what? I think it looks classy. A little bit too small for my tastes. Remember, it does look bigger on camera. I'm gonna have one macro in this video of a perspective shot of me wearing the watch from a distance. And then you're gonna truly see how it wears on the wrist. It was probably played earlier in the video. We're gonna check out the weight. Wow, 54 grams. Casio is saying it's 53. On your wrist, this thing does not exist. Okay guys, I dimmed the lights so we can see the LED in action. Very powerful amber LED for about one and a half seconds. Not bad. Okay guys, what do you think of this watch? Are you in love with it? Do you love the aliens connection? The history with being the first resin case now brought back by Casio, or are you more into the G-Shock line? Check out my old, old video on this one where my wife put a hidden camera and surprised me with this as a gift. Love it. That video will be up here. And if you're interested in other G-Shocks, there's an awesome red one where my wife attacked me because I said I liked it better than this one down here. And if you like this video, please like, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.